got a medical degree here. Uh, I became a radiologist and actually did a lot of the work for the San Francisco 49ers football team when they had knee injuries and this type of thing. He did a lot of work with them. My younger brother went here as well. I came to Iowa as a freshman in 61, and I wanted to be an engineer. That's, well, my math teacher in small town now, this is my math teacher, said two things you can do with math, and one, well, two things you can do with math, you learn math because it's fun, or you can be an engineer. So I wanted to be an engineer. The first semester here, I was, I was told I had to know how to draw, because that time it was computer done. But my drawings are so bad that I can't even do stick figures. So it was the end of engineering, and I decided I would move on. Well, the other thing the guy, math teacher, told me is that he thought he remembered that calculus could be used to find the areas of doorknobs. That was his, his statement to me about calculus was used for. Uh, anyway. So I came to the university wanting to double major in chemistry and math, which I did. Now, my undergraduate years here were very interesting, and I won't go through all the details of it, but all, all I will say is some of the things that happened involved a tank being stolen from an armory. I didn't do this. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a person in the dormitory where I was staying came back with it, took the tank, drove it as far as the gas would go, <laughs> left it in a cornfield, brought a bazooka, uh, some guns, and some knives back to the dorm, and we all convinced him to take them back. So he did. He took them back, put them by the old cabinet took a big dagger and put a note in the door and put the dagger in the note saying why he was returning them. He never got caught for that. I'm not going to tell you who he is. <laughs> he never got caught, but he did get caught later in the Iowa high school basketball was being held here at the state final. For some reason it wasn't in Des Moines that year. It's used in Des Moines. It was over at the field house and the next day's paper said somebody had gone. At that time these cameras were these real big heavy cameras. Somebody had taken one of these cameras and we went to this individual and said, well, we know you took it, right? No, nah, he hadn't taken it. About a month, well, maybe two months later, there was a knock on the door, and they said, do you know which room this person lives in? And I said, yes. I told them it was the FBI. <laughs> and they said, can we come in and wait in your room till he gets here? Well, I, I don't say no. <laughs> so uh, the individual got caught. He went to a psychiatric unit for a while, and he ended up being an accountant. Now, he does that. <laughs> <laughs> I won't tell you where he's at either, but so. <laughs> the 60s were an interesting time on campus. Uh, I tried to explain to my grandkids what the 60s were like, and they can't comprehend uh, what was all going on at the time. Uh, Vietnam War protests were going on, women's liberation movement civil rights struggles all the time. I can tell you on the steps of the old Capitol, I saw a big variety of things being burned. Okay, from the slim movement to cards to coffins, it was coffin burned. Uh, the hair was extremely long. I had a flat top at the time, which didn't seem to fit in with most of the group that was around there. But, but it was an interesting time, you can't really tell. I, I tried to explain to my grandkids, they even show pictures. And this just isn't any way to say that now, of course, I went from Iowa down to Florida State, which has never heard of any of those riots. I've never heard of any of those movements or anything. The very state, southern Kansas at the time. I also have a distinction of spending eight years in Iowa with only one winning football season. <laughs> <laughs> the very first year, we were five and four. Six of the remaining seven years, we finished seventh or lower in the Big Ten. Remember, that was when there were only ten teams. So seventh or lower was not very good in the Big Ten. It was, uh, it was after Forrest Evashevsky and things were, were really not very good. I also made the front page of the sports section of the Des Moines Register. We, students used to take toilet paper to the games and we throw them when we didn't like a call. And I heaved one once that made it to the field and hit the referee right in the side. <laughs> and the Des Moines Register snapped a picture of it, just as it hit him in the head and put it in the front page of the they didn't trace that back to me either. <laughs> but I have a picture here. So, all right, so enough undergraduate. I graduated in 65, double major in math and chemistry. I had intended to go to graduate school in chemistry, not mathematics, uh, or statistics. I applied to the University of Wisconsin, and I was so naive about how long it should take for someone to get back to you. 
I know much better now, having been chair and graduate chair at Ohio State, it's a long process, but Rose was really never going to I thought, they will get back. They didn't get back to me quickly enough. And Bob Hope said, well, we're starting a new department here. Would you like to come be a part of the department? I didn't know a lot about statistics at that time. I had courses, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But I said, okay, and that's the best decision I ever made. I'd like to do my research. I eat out my lakes, riding bicycles, whatever. As a chemist, I would have been stuck in the lab, which would have driven me nuts, I think. So it was a good decision. Uh, so I joined this new program, very small group. Um, why did I choose statistics? Well, part of the reason was Wisconsin didn't reply. But I had a course as an undergraduate from Bob Hogue and Alan Craig. Mathematical statistics. I took it as a junior. I still remember getting an exam with Bob that I got a problem a little bigger than one. I was a math major, okay? I didn't understand. It was, this was a major, not a problem. Okay? He, he reminded me of that many, many times over the years. Uh, but I took it, I bought, I used their famous blue book, the little thin blue book. It cost me $6.95 in 1963 when I bought that book. I still got the book. Mostly of the edition since. One semester of that course was taught by Bob, the other semester was taught by Alan. Two very inspiring teachers, two almost opposite type of teachers. <laughs> Alan Craig was methodical. He put everything on the board. You could take perfect notes from him. Uh, Bob, you know Bob. Bob is not very methodical. He's all over the room. Really great lecture. He really enjoyed everything. You left with great notes from Alan. You left the room. Bob gave a lecture, and you understood it all, and you looked at your notes, there may be five things written down there that were actually put on the board that you wrote down. So study was a little harder from, from Bob. Uh, I also remember about Alan, um, he used to make a person it for the day. He would assign homework on one day, and you'd come to the class the next time, and he'd walk in and he'd say, uh, Mr. Wolf, would you please present problems such and such to the class? And his patience was unbelievable. He would go up and just sit on the edge of his desk. And there could be silence. If you didn't know how to do it, he just waited. <laughs> <laughs> he would eventually maybe help a little bit, but not much. <coughs> you did your homework. You came to class, you did your homework. Or you did good class, you didn't have your homework done, I guess. But uh, it, it was just, but it was very, it, it wasn't in any mean way whatsoever. Now, Bob would call us somebody, too. But if you didn't answer fast enough, he'd help you answer. It would be very quick. Um, I also took an undergraduate senior seminar reading course with Bob. We used Kramer's book with Bob and Alan. That was an interesting period. It was just the three of us. And I, I was a senior. I didn't know any statistics beyond that basic course. <clears throat> but it was a lot of fun. And I tried to mimic both of those people when I teach. And I talk about Ohio State and I no longer do. Uh, I try to be a little bit interactive with the students. And I also like to write the notes. But my handwriting was not as legible as Alice. His was perfect. You could just write it. There were students have to keep asking, what is that word? I write it on the board. Uh, it worked. I got a couple of teaching awards at Ohio State, so apparently it paid off. I also tried to use Alan's approach to call on students, but I had Bob's patience. <laughs> I, I could not wait uh, for a student to respond to what I asked him. Bottom line is, I entered in the fall of 65 as part of the first class for the formerly new PhD program. Although there were some impressive grad students already here in pursuing the PhD in statistics within the math department. And I think of Michael Stolme, Jerry Stevers, and Tom Havensberger. They all acted as big brothers and gave us advice. Some good, some probably not so good. Uh, but it was advice, at least we had somebody here. Um, that first class was an interesting class. It was that Wayman was there, Dick Dykstra was there, Bob Miller, myself, and I remember at least three other names, Bill Clark, Marty James, and Ed Malgren were there shortly thereafter. They didn't pursue PhDs, but I didn't know them. I can still remember, and again, Ed may correct all this because he gets to follow me. Remember that in the analysis and probability with examples was taken commonly by the math department and staff department. I know this group outscored the math department on that examination, which was not much to their liking. Uh, mathematicians yeah. never thought statisticians should do that well on the exam. Of course, I must have been the dullard in the group because we all entered in 65. Bob, Ed, and Dick graduated in 68. I hung around in 69. I didn't realize you're supposed to do it for years, I guess. <laughs> there were five faculty members when I came. 
uh, Craig and Hogue and John Birch, along with uh, Lloyd Muller and Jim Hickman in the actual science program. Tim Robertson joined the next year I came, Tim came. And then John Cryer, Fred Leone, Paul Everett, and Tim Wright, uh, Ron Randall for added. And things were moving pretty quickly in Iowa City at that time. Apartments were withdrawing. And what do I remember about my graduate days? Well, we were talking earlier that the three statisticians who came originally as, as statisticians and got the NDA fellows first and not me, the laggard from chemistry to statistics, got an office together as statisticians, so they all had one office. I got shuttled over to the mathematics group and had an office with all mathematicians. That's fine. One, one of the very best friends that I've had over the years was a mathematician, and we as families kept having kids. He would have one, we would have one, he would have one, we would have one. I pleaded with him to stop after four. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he did. And so he did. Uh, we used to get together uh, weekly to watch television, a bunch of graduate students. Uh, we used to play a lot of euchre and peanut on as well. Those were the kind of games that we played. But we used to get together and watch a show called Dark Shadows. Anybody here ever heard of it? Okay. Dark Shadows was unbelievably the worst show on television. It was so bad that it was humorous. It was not meant to be humorous, but it was, you know, Barnaby Collins. It was about vampires. So now it's back in vogue at the time. We used to, every week we would not miss that show. We used to also go with Tim Robertson. We hunt for quail and pheasant. And, uh, and his, at that time, not so good hunting dog called Gus. Gus used to be a dog that we'd get out in the field and the first thing you know, Gus was gone. And, and Tim is blowing his whistle, shrill whistle, we couldn't hear him, he's blowing and blowing, and Gus is not coming back. He would always return before we'd finish the hunt, but it worked out okay. I'm such a bad shot, it didn't make any difference. If Gus got the target, pointed the bird out, I'd miss it, it wouldn't make any difference. But Tim put up with me because I knew the good places to hunt, that was my dog, so, so we would hunt down there and, and hunt. We also hunted for morel mushroom. Anybody know what a morel mushroom is? They, uh, they look like a sponge. They smoked very good. I hate them, but you can fry them in butter. But they were fun to, to go out and hunt for because they don't grow. They, they grow, I guess, afterward, but they pop. So when you're walking in the field, you walk by a tree, there's no mushrooms. You come back, and there might be 20 mushrooms. They pop in the meantime. They would grow a little more after that, but they do pop. So they were fun to get, and apparently a delicacy. They cost a lot of money to buy them. Uh, so we would get them and bring them back. You had only a short period of time, April and May, when you could get them. The temperatures hit 80s, and you get rain, mushrooms pop. I can still remember bringing some back to the other faculty members. Most everybody was receptive, but John Birch, being a Californian, was not sure that I wasn't trying to poison you. <laughs> I'm not eating what you brought me. And Tim Robertson finally convinced him that that was OK. We could eat these in our own mushrooms. I remember Bob Hoke's final oral examination in multivariate statistics. He gave us an oral. He grilled each of us individually for what seemed like an hour, probably it was only half an hour. But when it was all over and you were done, he said, well, go on down to my office door, the grades are posted. So he made his grades up long before the <laughs> you know. And of course, I didn't tell anybody else who was taking that exam, but that was good. They had to go through it just as well as I did. Of course, now you can't even post grades on doors. That time you could. Uh, I also remember some excellent softball teams. We used to play softball. That's what I really wanted to be as a professional baseball player, not, not a statistician. I wasn't good enough then. And I seem to recall, although it may be fabricated, nobody's contradicted it yet, that in the spring of 69, we actually won the faculty, staff, all the university league. Ron Randall's joined that year, came in September, and came in, in mid semester, and he was a good softball player, and we did win it that one year, I think. Uh, when Ron came, that was the beginning of an excellent long term collaboration with me. We wrote a book of theory and non parametric statistics together and we're lifelong friends. I also remember Lloyd Moeller on my thesis defense, and I didn't have any horses for Lloyd, he was just sort of the other person on the thesis defense. And he asked me if I considered myself a Bayesian. And I answered really quick I said, Of course not, I'm Bob Hoogston. <laughs> I'm not a Bayesian. And then he suggested that I never have any major surgery. And I said, why? He says, well, don't you want people using all the information and data they know about the process before they do surgery on you? And I sort of was stumped because I thought, that's what Bayesian is, what you're saying. Bayesians use everything. But that's my only uh, interaction with Lloyd. 
I went for my, I finished in 69, I went for my first interview at the University of Wisconsin, first time in an airplane, it's one of these little prop jobs that stays real low in the sky, I wasn't sure I was even going to get to Madison to go and give the talk. But I got there, I gave the talk, and the distinguished gentleman in the back row got up and said, I think that's the best seminar I've heard all year. And of course, I'm pumping up with pride, that was really good. The guy's name was George something. George Fox. <laughs> and then he added, it's the only seminar that I've <laughs> I didn't get the job. <laughs> but rather than interview with others, I chose to accept a two year postdoc at Florida State. Uh, Yaroslav Hayek was visiting there at that time, so it was a good time to be at Florida State. And we left Iowa City for Tallahassee. My wife, we had a one-year-old son. We had a tightly packed old car that uh, overheated on a regular basis. We had to stop at a couple streams on the way down to uh, get some car put in the radiator so we keep going. But we had to go right through Mississippi, Alabama, and Northern Florida with Iowa license plates. Now, this is the late 60s. I can remember filling up at a gas station in Mississippi near where the graves of those three freedom riders that were killed in, uh, in the uh, civil rights movement had been found earlier. It was not that year, or seven years earlier. But I, I just thought to myself, you know, let's get out of here with these Iowa plates because many of them had come from Iowa. I tried to pay. It was an African-American attendant that put the gas in the car, but they still put gas in the car for you. That, some of these things tell you exactly how old you are because you don't do that anymore. <laughs> and I tried to give him the money, and I thought the owner of the station was going to kill me. He came running out of the station, got between me, my money, and the attendant on off a few expletives, took the money, and as this was welcome to the South in the late 60s, my wife said, are you sure we want to come down here mm -hmm. this time? Because it, things were really important at the time. Mm -hmm. We arrived in Tallahassee. I got the initial welcome of the new faculty member, and that is to play tennis in August in Tallahassee at noon hour. <laughs> <laughs> they just let's go out and play some tennis. I said, sure, why not? Well, if you've been to Tallahassee in the summer, you know. Two years very important there. I began a collaboration with Miles Hollander on the Applied Non-Heritage Textbook, and that's now in his third edition. That's been a long-standing collaboration. And in the faculty position, so at the end of the NSF, I received offers from, from several schools, and, and one of them was a brand new graduate program in statistics at the Ohio State University. I'm sure you let me know it was the Ohio State University um, in Columbus. I was fully aware that it was 70 degrees over Thanksgiving was not normal, even though Ransom Whitney tried to convince me at the time that that was standard weather in Ohio at Thanksgiving. I knew better. I grew up in Iowa, so I knew better. But I think by that time I developed a penchant for starting new graduate programs. We were here in Iowa. We started a brand new one there with five faculty members. But being in the Big Ten was also important for me. I did have to make an adjustment because in the two years of Florida State, we called the statistic that Wilcoxon ranked some statistics. Of course, at Ohio State, it was called the Man Whitney statistic. So Whitney was there. So I used all three names carefully for the first few years at Ohio State. <laughs> to my great surprise, well, the other thing was going to Ohio State was we are now going to encounter the hated Woody Hayes. Having been here with Horace Evashevsky, we had a long standing feud with Woody Hayes, and then didn't do it, did not get along at all. But Woody was a much nicer person than you all ever had the idea. Not on the field, obviously some dumb things there, but he really did think good things for the students. But I did learn to enjoy many football games. <laughs> yeah, I'm done about that. To my great surprise, I ended up staying at OSU for 40 consecutive years, including 16 years as graduate chair, 12 years as department chair, so I know the pain you went through in the last years. Um, helped build the department to more than 25 faculty members, graduate program over 100 graduate students, I finished my 26th PhD student, although I'm it's going to way top that. But after that, I retired in July 2011. I'm still staying active, working with students on uh, research problems, not dissertation uh, level, but other research problems. And I'm on another book project. Whatever small piece I have been privileged to add to the profession, I owe completely to the undergraduate and graduate work here at the University of Iowa. And all I'll finish with is I'll say, go eyes. Now that's E Y E S, both hawk and buck. Thank <laughs> you.